The following is an important announcement from After Hours Cinema. Hey, and welcome to another episode of After Hours Cinema. I'm your host, Lee Turner, and tonight we're going to mix things up a little bit and showcase a big budget film with some bona fide movie stars, by our standards at least. It's 1976 Embryo, starring Rock Hudson, Barbara Carrera, and Diane Ladd. The movie was also alternatively titled as Created to Kill. Compared to some of the films we have shown in the past, you might be wondering how a film with this caliber of talent and star power entered the public domain. The answer is simple the filmmakers forgot to include the necessary copyright symbol, Lucky Us. And while it was shot in the mid 70s, the movie has somewhat of a 1950s mad scientist throwback feel to it, as much as the film takes place in a large mansion complete with a mysterious laboratory. The film's plot centers around a scientist played by Hudson whose experiments with rapid fetal aging causes one of his test subjects to become a full grown adult woman in a mere four weeks. As you might guess, things took a bizarre and disturbing turn. So let's get to it. Here is 1976's Embryo. Use this leader to focus the picture and adjust the sound volume. The film will then be ready for correct projection. Everyone knows home video is one of the great advances of this age.
She ran out in front of the car. I couldn't stop in time. All right. Oh. Were you asleep at the wheel? Careful. Turn on those lights. Okay. All right, just a minute, Paul. Spleen, little mother. I don't think you're gonna make it. Maybe your pups will have a chance. Paul, is there anything else I can do? Get Gordon on the phone. Is the dog gonna make it? I don't know. Put it on the speaker. No, no, no. I can't do it in the morning. It could be important. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I'll check back with you. You're not sick, are you? No, 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 I'm fine. Get 20 micrograms of thyroxin, 30 minutes. Hold it a minute. Now, tell me again. 20 micrograms of thyroxin, 30 million units of penicillin, and 10 units of canine blood. And hurry up. Be there as quick as I can, Dad. So what's happening? I don't know, but he called. First time since the accident. Really excited about something. Yeah, so was I. What are you doing? 
<laughs> it's called getting dressed. First Get you put back on to your... bed before you both catch cold. Oh, no, nothing doing. We have unfinished business. You know, on the way home, that lookout point on Mulholland Drive would be the perfect place. Helen. Bum, bum. <laughs> well, I'm very adaptable, as well as being very sexy. <laughs> being pregnant does that, you know. It makes you sexier. God gives me strength. <laughs> Don't give it a second thought, darling. It is all taken care of. You see, God is a liberated female, and she is on my side. <laughs> open. What's going on, Dad? I'll tell you in a minute. Oh, Paul, what happened to her? She ran out in front of the car. I couldn't stop in time. I'm trying to save the pups. You mean these things are alive? Two of them are, now. They don't resemble their mother very much. You didn't exactly look like Robert Redford at that stage, either. They're alive. And that makes them beautiful. She's gonna live, isn't she? I don't know. She's holding her own. You know how good. You are a mess. Huh? <laughs> Why don't you go get cleaned up? Oh, uh, Yeah, I, uh, I'll be back in a minute. Thanks. Is my future protege behaving himself? Oh, hardly. He's ornery as hell, starting to kick. You want to feel? Yeah. Hey, what does Dr. Cannon say? He says you're going to be a perfectly healthy grandfather. Grandfather? <laughs> hmm. Be back in a minute. It's good to see him working again. You know, he hasn't been in the lab since Mother died. This is the first time that I have ever been in the lab. It is unreal. Oh, Nicole, where in all this are you? My sister's still here, Paul, with us. No, she isn't. And I'm still guilty to make it easier for you. No. You still resent the fact that I walked away without a scratch? Nicole's gone. And I'm still here. You can't accept that, Martha. And neither can I. So you see, we agree. It's as simple as that. It looks like you lost another one.
five weeks or so developed. The mother is providing life support, but she can't live over 12 hours, and the fetus has no chance of survival on its own. So in an attempt to speed its development, at 3.05 a.m., I commenced intravenous injection of placental lactogen. Placental lactogen is a growth hormone Nicole, uh, that is, Dr. Nicole Holliston and I were experimenting with at the time of her death. It will either cause rapid development of the fetus due to accelerated growth of molecular cell structures, or the patient will die within hours. Placental lactogen consists of polypeptide fragments with a C C marker and has two disulfide bridges. it or not, you're getting one hell of a chance at life. I hope you like it. Number one. Because of prematurity, and to alleviate possible shock, I placed number one in an isolette at 10.40 a.m. The growth hormone is discontinued, but nourishment is being fed intravenously. A sample specimen of cells seems to be without defect and the growth pattern normal. I've decided to recommence intravenous feeding of placental lactogen, the growth hormone, to study further how the rapid growth progresses. At 1.40 a.m. the 24th, the puppy is now six weeks or so developed, but is only two days and 15 hours old. accelerated growth is constant. When it's withdrawn, the growth pattern immediately returns to normal with no apparent harm to the cells. However, I've decided not to release the results of this experiment until I'm sure placental lactogen, the growth hormone, has no side effects. Placental lactogen discontinued, cell activity dropped again to normal. Number one has attained growth comparable to one year, is still in light tranquilized state. Will attempt to stimulate the consciousness by injection of nailing.
heel. Sit down. Stay. Come. Sit. I didn't think that dog stood a chance. Are you going to keep her? Yeah. You? It's a shame you weren't able to save any of the pop days. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry, too. But failure is what keeps us geniuses from becoming too vain. <laughs> Come. Somebody forgot to tell her the dogs and children always like me. She's obviously been well trained. You don't need me. Thanks for your help. the time. Go get your dinner. I'll put the dish away and go to bed. Extraordinary. It may be an accidental side effect of the drug. I have decided to attempt. A similar experiment with a human embryo. Hey, it's Hillary Tory from thecampushouse.com. Stay up late with me and watch Fear Flicks. Check it out. Check out these shows available now on Fear Flicks. And welcome to another collection of frightfully good films from Fear Flix, Gothic Horrors, with me, your host, Malvolia, the Queen of Screams. Hey, I'm Pamela Such. You know me from all the wave movies. And here we are, we're going to play Curse of the Swamp Creature 2. Hello guys, I'm Rachel Waits. And I'm Elise Costin. Welcome to Silent Screams. I'm Pamela Such. I'm Monica Hayes. Thank you for tuning in to 70s Grind Out on Fearflix. Hey y'all, I'm Sherry Davis, your host for this wild and untamed collection of horror films from Fearflix. We wrangled up a selection of Texas horrors for this one. Welcome to Lone Star Horrors. These shows, movies, and much more available now on Fearflix. Download it on your Roku Channel Store today. Hey, this is Sparkle Sujan, and you're watching After Hour Cinema. Hey, and welcome back to After Hour Cinema. While Embryo may seem like a typical Mary Shelley's Frankenstein rehash, it actually more closely resembles a 1911 story by German novelist Hans Evers titled Alrana. The novel tells of a scientist that actually impregnates an external embryo with the seed of a Hain murderer, giving birth to a girl with no natural capacity for love. The story was adapted in 1928 to a silent film sharing the novel's title. There were a couple more adaptations along the way, though critics argue the 1928 version to be the definitive film. Whether by cluelessness or negligence, the filmmakers of Embryo 
let the previous movie slide under their radar and gave no credit to the original novel. Though director Ralph Nelson did utilize some of the same themes from his 1968 movie Charlie about a mentally handicapped man who undergoes an experiment which dramatically boosts his intellectual capacity, transforming him into a genius. The movie won star Cliff Robertson his only Oscar for his performance as the character. Well, we're sad to say that there were no Oscars handed out for tonight's film, but if that was the case, we probably wouldn't have this gem in the public domain. So let's get back to the action. long. Difficult, but not impossible. You'd be jeopardizing your career, your whole life. The results could be worth it. Nothing is worth going to jail for. That's debatable. Nicole had three miscarriages before we had Gordon. They were all genetically perfect. But they died because they came into the world too soon. Paul, I understand. Believe me, now, I do. And I know your dedication. But it is morally questionable to experiment with a living being. A six months fetus is a living being with a chance of survival outside of the womb, but 12 to 14 weeks has no hope whatsoever. I'm not asking for anything that has a chance for life on its own. An accident where the mother is dying is what I need. An abortion even. Listen to me. 20 years work is beginning to take shape. The children that Nicole and I didn't have will in their own way live. Now help me, Jim, please. Maybe. And only if it does not put me or the hospital in a vulnerable position. Blood type A. Well, that may take a little while. I'll let you know. I have a temporary life support container in the car. I'll get it. Betrays a certain quiet self-confidence on your part. I knew you as a fervent doctor before you became a fervent administrator. Jim Wiston. Yeah, Paul. I've got an attempted suicide down here who's not going to make it. She's uh, 14, 15 weeks pregnant and the right blood type. Are you doing an experiment? Paul, may I help you, please? Paul, I'd like to. Paul! Well, you just are getting your own something your own sandwich. The difference between the canine and human circulatory tract and cell structure makes it difficult to say what effect the growth hormone will have on the human fetus. Chances for the experiment to succeed are minimal because of the immature development of the fetus. It's my estimate that the fetus has a chance of reaching the five-month development stage before termination of life. If enough is learned from this and other experiments, it's possible that within a few years, 
placental nitrogen can be used to save miscarried infants and allow them to live. Continuous life support began at 11.50 p.m. February 5th. Heartbeat and other vital signs normal. 10 a.m. February 6th. Fetus showed signs of hypoxia. I made an adjustment and the oxygen saturation is stabilized. Two fifteen p.m. February 7th. Growth pattern approximately 30 to 1. Each 24 hour span appears to equal one month's growth in the mother's womb. I'm amazed. February 8th, 6.45 p.m. Fetus size is now equivalent to an eight month normal pregnancy. It's incredible. hormone discontinued and the baby transferred to an isolate at 9 10 p.m. February 9th. The heartbeat is steady, lungs are expanded and clear. subject to the clinic without implicating Dr. Whiston or his hospital. I have no delusions about the legal problems I will have to face. Despite the discontinuance of the growth hormone, the infant is still developing at an accelerated rate. February 13, 1 p.m. I'm still unable to arrest the child's rapid growth. The development rate is now approximately one year to each 24-hour period and seems to be accelerating with each hour. February 16, 2 p.m. Rapid growth, still uncontrolled. Rate now about two years for every 24-hour period. I've worked for 25 years to save life. And now if the girl lives, I've robbed her of a part of her life. I can't even justify bringing others in for consultation. It's my responsibility alone. February 21, 3.40 a.m. There has been a marked change in the cell activity over the past three hours. The rapid cell growth is easing off, but the existing cells are now aging and dying at a terrifying rate. My God, will it ever end? The cell action changeover from growth to aging is significant. Preliminary tests indicate the rapid aging may be receptive to certain combinations of DNA blocking agents. 30 cc of antimetabolite solution retarded aging for three hours and then became ineffective. February 23rd, 1 a.m. I administered 50 cc of 5-hydroxydopamine, which would be effective if given in a massive dose. However, such a massive dose would cause heart arrest and death within 24 hours. February 24, 7 a.m. Administering 50 cc of methotrexate, a risk 
because it's a very strong drug and highly addictive. If methotrexate doesn't arrest the rapid aging, I have no choice but to transfer the girl to the research clinic. I can't cope with it any longer. It's been 19 hours since I administered methotrexate. I think I found the antidote. Accelerated aging has ceased with no withdrawal symptoms. I am, for the first time, optimistic. Why should number one and the girl react differently to the placental oxygen? I've run tests on both. The main difference seems to be that the puppy fetus dependent on its mother existed on an artificial system. It's now been 36 hours since the methotrexate injection. Aging is still slow to... <coughs> still slow to a normal level. If it's permanently stabilized and she's normal in all respects, I shall keep her with me and prepare her as much as possible for the outside world. And that'll be quite a task. The tranquilizers are discontinued. I will raise her to consciousness with a series of nailing injections. I have no idea as to the outcome, but I've, I've done all I can. Also, I'll begin subconscious teaching at this time. Are 16. 16 and 16 are 32. 32 and 32 are 64. Let us repeat. 1 and 1 are 2. 2 and 2 are 4. 4 and 4 are 8. Eight and eight are 16. 16 and 16 are 32. Two and two are four. Four and four are eight. Eight and eight are 16, 16, and 16 are 32, 32, and 32 are 64, let us repeat, 1 and 1 are 2. Two and two 
are four. Four and four are eight. Eight and eight. Patient, Victoria, awakened approximately 11.30. She seems alert and upon preliminary examination, functioning at a normal level. Heartbeat is normal, lungs clear. <coughs> Noticeable laxity of muscles from immobility. <coughs> Sixteen. Sixteen. No, 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 no. Sixteen. 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 And sixteen are thirty-two. Sixteen and sixteen are thirty-two. Thirty-two and thirty-two are sixty-four. Let us repeat. One and one are two. Two and two are four. Four and four are eight. Eight and eight are sixteen. Sixteen and sixteen are thirty-two. Thirty-two and thirty-two are sixty-four. Let us repeat. One and one are two. Two and two are four. Four and four are eight. Martha, you may as well stay with Helen until I get back. Okay. You take care of yourself. Oh, and be sure to call us from Denver. Oh, uh, uh, yes, I will. Uh, I'll call you when I'm coming back. You're going to be so busy fixing up the nursery for my grandson. You won't even miss me. <laughs> oh, I just remembered. There is the cutest little frog lamp in the head. It would be perfect for a little boy's room. Wait till I get home and I'll be out. Victoria! 
gone. Now we start learning to communicate. With the house to ourselves, I'm trying to express of life. It's easy to forget that the most simple things, things we take for granted, are totally unknown to her. She is incredibly perceptive, her mind like a sponge, open and ready to absorb everything. Yet, there's a plus factor in all of this. While most of us are capable of using a fraction of our brain capacity, she is able to utilize hers 100%, or damn close to it. There are no barriers, no unconscious blockages, perhaps because she missed the social and environmental restrictions we had imposed on us when we grew up. It's not an unpleasant task to teach such a willing pupil. Continued tests indicate the aging is progressing at a normal level, and there are no signs of addiction or withdrawal from methotrexate. I'm terribly relieved. This is a microscope. Microscope. Her intelligence and comprehension are overwhelming. A combination of total recall and the ability to utilize the information logically. She is not developing emotionally as rapidly as mentally, but I assume this will come with time. And there are your cells. And they're all normal. Hello? Hello? Well, Pa, where are you? Are you being properly devilish? <laughs> no, I'm still in Denver. Tell Martha to enjoy herself. Take a rest from the house till I get back. I may stop off in Salt Lake City for a little while. Yes, I'll let you know. What? Oh, no. No, I'm fine. Love to Gordon. Goodbye. What did you think of it? An interesting story, but not very logical. <laughs> this Bible is much more than just a story. It's an account of the way the world actually began. From what I've learned, that's impossible. Well, you're not alone in thinking that way. But to many, the moral values are what's important. Moral values? Yes, the... <sighs> in time. Victoria. I like my name. Why am I called that? Because you were a victory for both of us. Come outside. There's a whole world for you to see. Were there times when you were afraid I wouldn't be a victory? Oh, from the beginning. You see, I never really expected you to be born. And then your life took hold. It wouldn't let go. It moved at such speed. I didn't think I could stop it. You know, there was a chance there where you could have been born, lived, and died of old age without ever knowing you'd exist. Couldn't you have gone for help? If the methotrexate hadn't worked, I would have. But thank God it did. Why thank God? What would have been so bad about going for help? I'd have put you into a clinic. There you'd have been a strange happening, an exhibit. Something under glass to be looked at, examined, experimented with. A freak. A freak. I would have hated that. I know. Can it happen now? No. Oh, one chance in a million, but that's as good as saying no. Your cells are normal. <laughs> You're not supposed to eat that. A flower is supposed to be looked at and admired. Like this. See? Still, we're going to have to tell people about you. Can't keep your secret much longer. That's going to be a problem for you, Victoria. I'm sorry for that. You see... You're unique. You may never happen again. And from what you tell me, I may not have happened at all. Live and died without ever being? Yes. Perhaps if you'd been taken from the womb and you were more developed, say six or seven months, the growth hormone wouldn't have reacted as it did. But that's something we'll never know. A six-month fetus has a chance for life on its own. To experiment and fail at that stage would be murder. And that I will not do. But still, you ought to tell others about me. Still, I am to be the guinea pig. No. 
I won't allow it to go that far. Where am I, Paul? Who are my parents? Your mother gave her name as Ann Smith. She died shortly after you were taken from her. And her real name? I don't know. They were never able to trace her. My father? Your mother never would say. Who knows about your experiment, about me? No one. I really don't exist, do I? I'm a non-person. That's absurd. What's all this doomsday stuff? Doomsday stuff. 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 Whatever your choice from the snack bar, things go better with Coke. Come into my laboratory. I'd like to show you something. We should leave at once. In those eyes, you can guess all the cruelty of their diabolical ceremonies. Ceremonies produced by sinister witches and under the guidance of the mysterious Tambala. Legends say they even produced human sacrifices. They gladly go to their deaths with the hope that they'll be accepted into the Legion of the Zombies, winning the favor of Baron Samity, and this way, enjoy the privilege of the living death. patrons, men, women, boys, girls. Through the cooperation of leading business places, you may now have free admission to this theater. Ask for dividend tickets when you shop at...
dividend tickets will be accepted on all standard box office priced films. So take a circular with you today and start saving dividend tickets tomorrow when you shop. See your next movie completely free. And now, on with the show. Hey, welcome back to After Hours Cinema. I'm Rachel Waits, and tonight I got some special treats for you. Featuring father and son, horror movie legends, Lon Chaney Sr. and Lon Chaney Jr. First up, we have the trailer to Lon Chaney Sr.'s silent classic, Phantom of the Opera, with its groundbreaking special effects makeup, which is a personal favorite of mine, as you can all see. Excellent. Lon Chaney's acting and special effects makeup career would later be told in the biopic, The Man of a Thousand Faces, starring James Cagney. As to Lon Chaney Jr., he would eventually follow in his father's footsteps, portraying classic characters like The Wolfman, Frankenstein, and The Mummy, just to name a few. But tonight, we are going to showcase another jungle and swamp themed B-movie starring him, 1959's The Alligator People. Inside this strange, forbidding plantation, on the edge of the death-laden bayous, there is a horror beyond belief. A scientist turns his cobalt rays on the revolting, scaly monarchs of the swamps to transform men into hideous, living gargoyles, whose faces must be forever hidden from human sight. He didn't have to hit him. Quick as simplest way, Doctor. But these are people. You don't handle them like animals. Beverly Garland as the unwelcome visitor, haunted by the fear that the man she loves has become one of them. What are you doing? I'm not leaving here, Mrs. Hawthorne, until I get the answers to the questions that brought me here. What have you done with my husband? 
Lon Chaney as the hook-armed, hate-maddened Cajun. I'll kill you, alligator man! Just like I'd kill any four-legged gator! Suspense that will clutch you like quicksand. <coughs> pulling you down into bottomless depths of suffocating horror. Hope you enjoyed those retro trailers. Before I go, I wanted to give a special after hour cinema shout out to fellow host Halloween Jack and the Bone Jangler, along with everyone at the Monster Channel. Thanks so much for your support. Hey, and welcome back to After Hour Cinema. Now that Dr. Holliston's test tube baby has matured into a full grown woman in a mere 30 minutes, there's nothing comes to mind more than the old saying, they grow up so fast. Portraying the doctor's experiment is the stunning Barbara Carrera, who would go on to start a string of horror and sci-fi films, including 1977's The Island of Dr. Moreau and 1981's Condor Man. She was also a Bond girl in Never Say Never Again. Leading man Rock Hudson, on the other hand, saw his career coming to a close around the time of Embryo's release. While he starred in a string of romantic films in the 1950s, he was also known for his role in 1968's action thriller, Ice Station Zebra. And while tonight's two lead actors are clearly attractive, it's not hard to argue that the handsome Doberman in the film doesn't steal a scene or two. Though if the lab-grown canine's strange and homicidal behavior doesn't tell us anything about the innocently naive Victoria, What's coming up at tonight's movie surely will. So let's get back to 1976's Embryo. February 23rd, 1 a.m. I administered 50 cc of 5-hydroxydopamine, which would be effective if given in a massive dose. However, such a massive dose would cause heart arrest and death within 24 hours. February 24, 7 a.m. Administering 50 cc of methotrexate, a risk because it's a very strong drug and highly addictive. If methotrexate doesn't arrest the rapid aging, I have no choice but to transfer the girl to the research clinic. It's been 19 hours since I administered methotrexate. Accelerated aging has ceased with no withdrawal symptoms. I am, for the first time, optimistic. <laughs>
Martha, she said. She saw you? No. She called out her name. I hid in the lab, but she didn't come in. Good, good. Nobody must see you. Here. Take that in Go on, go on. Paul? What? Maybe you please go away somewhere. I should like to see some of the things you've told me about before. Before what? You know, when you have to tell others about me. All right. We'll go this afternoon. <laughs> it's time you experience being around other people. <laughs> Thank you. I'll try not to embarrass you. Thank you. <laughs> enough it was wonderful but too short i love every minute of it anyhow the plaza the shops the people the marvelous old mission it was all exciting and beautiful but sometimes i felt i said the wrong things or asked the wrong question once or twice people stared at me and i uh, did i make a mistake paul no no you didn't make any mistakes it's just that people don't see the beauty around them sometimes they take it all for granted your enthusiasm made them aware of what they were missing. Is that good? Very good. <laughs> we'll pick up Martha on the way home and you can meet Gordon and Helen. We're almost there. Let's hear it. Victoria Spencer from hmm. Denver, Colorado. Parents deceased, age 25, unmarried. Studied where? At the University of Colorado, the College of Applied Science in the School of Medicine. It was established by territorial legislature in 1861, but the first cornerstone was not laid until... Hold it, hold it. Uh, just say where you went to school. Don't give a dissertation. Remember, never volunteer. Okay. Now, how did we meet? You were in need of a research assistant, and I was recommended by a professor of chemistry. And his name? Dr. William Bigman. Good. Now is not the time. Paul, hmm? this is what is called making one's debut, isn't it? I'd like you to meet my daughter-in-law and my son, Gordon, Helen. This is Victoria Spencer, my new research assistant. Delighted to meet you, Victoria. Oh, well, let me take your hat. Gordon, get them some drinks. Yeah. Uh, I think you've met Mike Seaman. Yes, yes of course. Oh, my nice father, Victoria yeah. Spencer, Mike Seaman. Victoria, please. Please. Martha? Paul has stopped off on his way home, and he has a lady with him. A what? A lady? A new assistant. working with Dr. Holliston is very exciting. I'm sure. And we went to this fantastic restaurant. Was I all right? Sure, just fine. Paul? I'm surprised. You didn't call me when you got home. What are you talking about? Well, I was up at the house two weeks ago and that dog of yours was there. Oh, yes. I, uh, I was in and out in the one day. I didn't find it necessary to tell anyone. Uh, Martha, meet Victoria Spencer. She'll be working with me. Victoria, this is my sister-in-law, Martha Douglas. Paul has spoken of you so many times. Really? Well, I'm afraid he hasn't mentioned you. Where are you staying, Miss Spencer? She'll be staying at the house. Of course. I'll come home with you today. Tell me when you're ready, I'll get my things. Oh, no, you won't. Now, you help me plan this collection, and I'm not going to let you desert me in the middle of it. I'll take you home tomorrow. Oh, oh by the way, George just came in, and he's looking for me. Oh. oh. I... Excuse me. Where'd you study, Miss Spencer? 
at University of Colorado. Colorado, that's my old alma mater. Tell me, is Dr. Hanley still head of chemical medicine there? I heard he was retiring. He was a cantankerous old bastard, you know, but a damn fine teacher. I look forward even more to working with Dr. Holliston. I still have much to learn. Less and less. Excuse me. Excuse me, please. I, uh... I've been in a holding pattern over you all day. What shall I do about it? Hmm? Look, while we're mulling over all options, have some wine. Yeah. It's an Italian vintage. Probably made in uh, Algeria out of bull's blood and rubbing alcohol. If a man with your taste and intelligence enjoys it, who am I to refuse? The sun shines on these dreary people as if they were worth a floodlight inspection. But for me, as, uh, as Oscar Wilde would say, give me deeper darkness. Money is not made in the light. Excuse me. I believe it was Mr. George Bernard Shaw. First I curtain of Heartbreak House? Of course. I was just testing you in your past. Beauty plus intelligence. Very sensuous. We're going to enjoy a rousingly good hump. Hump? Yes. Old you refer well, to a, a favorite slang word that the Elizabethans used for fornication. I've read much of the subject. <laughs> you can talk to your computers like that, but not my guests, huh? Mm -hmm. Do you make computers? <laughs> no, no, I, um, I make them work. I manage uh, Teletext International Systems uh, in my spare time. When I'm not confusing Shaw with Wilde. Or Rabelaisian humor with bad taste. I'm surrounded. Therefore, I surrender to all women. Mm. One of these days, I'm going to remember what a presumptuous son of a bitch is and not invite him around. He's only obsessed with a perfectly normal urge. Also, oh, I've read. <laughs> Victoria, you are unique. And totally charming. Come on, let me introduce you to some nice people. Well, let's say nicer people. <laughs> Good game. No, not really. Why could he give you my queen and both rooks instead of whipped you? <laughs> you may be right. Mm. No, that's not correct. It is feasible you could have given the queen and one rook, but not the queen and both rooks. Chess is one of the last bastions of male chauvinism. Would you like to challenge the champion? I've never played. She has never played, and yet she tells me I am wrong. I've read the rules in the book on chess, and a very interesting book by Alakine. Oh. You know, um, I had a friend once, never skied. He read every book there was. First day out on the slopes, broke both his ankles. This is much safer. You just sit down, sweetheart, and I'll show you the rules of the game. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, this little doodad? That is a pawn. Now, he can only move one space at a time, except on his first move. I know. Shall we play it? Huh? Well, they use the pacifier, but they refuse to be humiliated by discussing it. They wouldn't go that far, not even for science. Oh, your Victoria is something extraordinary. You should see what she's doing to Frank Riley. I love it. I hope he doesn't beat her too badly. Dr. Brothers, I read your column every day. It's wonderful. Thank you. That's uh, very nice. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me.
Wonderful. Wonderful. If you don't keep quiet, this game is off. You do, you understand damn well that is San and Man versus Staunton. I knew it 15 moons ago and I couldn't focus on it. Oh, the match was played in Paris on December the 6th, 1843. It's a classic game. You led me into it. You played before, you know every game. Not every game. Well, you certainly know this game well enough. You let me win. You should have played Bishop Takes Rooks Pawn. I'd have had to resign. Where have you played before? Played. I've only read books. I've never played. I've only read books. You let me win! Oh! She let me win! Nobody lets me win, Debbie Ever here! Nobody! Oh! <laughs> he had him beaten. You are a merry man. <laughs> I believe that he. That, that even if I had taken his rook's pawn, he could have replied with a move that would have been a draw. Enough, Victoria. <laughs> Why did you wish me to lose? Because you should have lost. But chess is only a game. Once one knows the alternate possibilities of play, there's a logical progression to the conclusion. There are some things you can't get out of books. To understand them, they have to be experienced. Be patient. Victoria! <laughs> what a wonderful thing to see. His ego will never recover. Oh, welcome to our little group. We're original but very loving. You'll like us. <laughs> I know I will.
administering 50 cc of methotrexate, a risk because it's a very strong drug and highly addictive. If methotrexate doesn't arrest the rapid aging, I have no choice but to transfer the girl to the research clinic. <laughs> you go through life as if you were constantly sucking on a lemon. Well, then I'll have to learn to sip nectar in the future. Two impressive degrees. And she's how old? 25. Brilliant, obviously. Let's see, Nicole was 30 before she got hers, wasn't she? Martha, this is your home. You belong here. And now Victoria belongs here. It's a whole new life for all of us. Why not become a part of it? person in a thousand would know the author of that. And I don't know anyone who's ever quoted it. Well, it could be perfectly matched. Perhaps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you mean to say you control this entire operation? Yes, I do. My computer's a better company than most people I know. They're, um, they're impersonal, but intellectually stimulating. This is it. Best in the States. Maybe the world. And here's the medical unit you asked about. May I ask you a question? You know how to operate a computer? Yes. Yes, of course. You uh, read a book about it, like chess. Mm, yes, I did. All right. Type out the pertinent background data here, and then the question. milliliters pituitary gland extract from unborn fetus. 
five to six months development. Was, uh, was the question as enigmatic as the answer? fetus has a chance for life on its own to experiment fail at that stage would be murder are you saying me Finest restaurants in Marseille. Thank you. It's nice to be appreciated. In the cookbook, La Rousse Gastronomique recommends a touch more tarragon. I'll get the coffee. <laughs> when is your baby due? According to my calculations, I am five months. 25 days and about two hours pregnant. So that would make it due August 7th. August 5th. Paul mentioned that you and Gordon are going out of town next week? Mm. To Seattle. Gordon is beating the bushes again for university money. I'm going to tag along with him. If Dr. Callan will let me. He's a terrific gynecologist, but he has zero sense of adventure. He thinks that planes and pregnant ladies don't mix. Candlin. Yes. I understand he's very good. <laughs> no, it's not my imagination. Then you took it the wrong way, Martha. What's the matter with you? I don't know what's the matter with me. I didn't take anything the wrong way. I can't stand to be in the same room with that woman. I am Why? Frightened. She frightens me, Paul. It's I not... don't see why. For heaven's sake, she's been nothing but nice to you. You've chosen not to be nice to her. I have checked. Paul, your precious Victoria isn't any research assistant. She never went to the University of Colorado. Just who is she? I'd like to know where she came from. She's as qualified as I am. This has been my home for 15 years, but that's it. I'm not going to stay in this house with her any longer. you got to choose, Paul, between your assistant and me. And at 8 o'clock in the morning, I am leaving for Minneapolis.
plump, juicy wieners are dipped in a thick, golden, southern-style corn batter that seals in all their freshness and flavor. Hi, this is actress Ali Pettis reminding you, don't ask who's there. Just ignore them. Keep watching After Hour Cinema. Hey, and welcome back to After Hour Cinema. We hope you enjoyed tonight's movie. Now, before we get back to the feature, we'd like to showcase a haunting little indie short from filmmaker Tim Hall. A writer and director from Brooklyn, New York, his short film Totentons means Dance of Death and is also another name for a music piece by 19th century Hungarian composer Franz Liszt. Tim said he had classical music in his mind while writing this short film and one listen to Totentons gives him plenty of inspiration. So here it is, Tim Hall's Totentons. Hello? Is anyone... enjoyed that showcase of another talented filmmaker and we appreciate Tim for sharing it with us. The filmmaker tells us that he has more projects in the work and if you want to keep up with him be sure to check him out on Facebook at Crooked Cat Pictures. Now let's get back to the finale.
she's dead. Today for Seattle. Um, I'd be all right. I've got number one. All right. I'll take the first flight out. Take care of the burial arrangements. I'll try to be back by Sunday. I'll call you from Minneapolis. $200 if you come to my home for the evening. For $200? Could learn to like it. Um, come on in while I change. Thank you. But uh, no rough stuff, huh? I understand your condition. I doubt it. What do you mean it wasn't natural causes? Dr. Holliston, was your sister-in-law subject to extreme hypertension? Well, she was tense, yes, but nothing medically serious. She took sleeping pills from time to time. No reason for her to self-administer any other drug? In God's name, get to the point. What killed her? We found a massive dose of what we think is 5-hydroxydopamine in her heart muscle. Now, it's experimental. We don't know too much about it, but the drug seems to have a cumulative effect. It doesn't dissipate, causing cardiac arrest. Dr. Holliston, just a minute. There are forms to be filled out. This may be a homicide. Thank 
Shadow, what happened? Oh, well, between Gordon and Dr. Cameron, I got out and voted so Gordon went on alone. He made me promise that I wouldn't stay by myself. So here I am. Please go, Helen. What's the matter? Uh, are you all right, Victoria? Please. I'll call you later. Where's Paul? In San Francisco. At a, at a medical conference. I'll call you, okay? Now, please go! You look so tired. Well, now, he is working you too hard. I'm going to make us both a cup of coffee. Wait. I'll do it. I'm sorry about earlier. Actually, I'm glad you're here. City Club in Seattle, please. Gordon. Dad. I, um, I want you and Helen to sit down. You're at Martha. What? Well, what do you mean? Where is she? Oh, my God. Don't ask any questions, just catch the first plane home. It would be 
wise for you to leave. I don't want to kill her. But I will if it's necessary. Why? Tell me why, Victoria. I want to live. I must. Why, Helen? Why the baby? They want to live, too. Helen can have more babies. I must have this one. Why? I'm dying, Paul. See for yourself. Why didn't you tell me? What could you do about it? Look at me, Paul. Look at me. Look closely. I'm dying. There was a flaw in your creation, and you thought you had corrected it. But uh, I'm immune to my perfection. And uh, I'm also what I believe is called a junkie. This is the only antidote. Jerry Glandist. From Helen's baby? This... What are you doing? I'm fixing you a larger dose of methotrexate. You're in pain. I'm here to help you, Victoria. No. 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 Trust me. No. What I need, you can't get me. By your own words, you called it murder. Get out. Please. Get out. Please. Get out. I don't want to kill. I don't want to kill. I just want to live. Please. Gordon, the oxygen. <laughs>
Stay back. Give room to work, please. Yeah. She's having convulsions. Oh, it isn't convulsions. She's having a baby. No. No, it can't be. It can't. It can't happen. Die. God damn you, die. Both of you. It's your baby. It's your baby. Oh. Hey, and welcome back to After Hour Cinema. Well, that's a wrap on Ralph Nelson's tragic yet cautionary tale about meddling with the laws of nature. While Embryo's a little too self-assured for its own good, it's still a great piece about the destruction that man can cause by his own ambition. And let's not discount the film's technical achievements. Oscar-winning cinematographer Fred Cohenkamp provides some stylish and sometimes unsettling spectacles worthy of a dark sci-fi thriller. And for those reasons and others, we give Embryo the After Hours Cinema seal of approval. Be sure to tune in next week for another great public domain flick. Until then, I'm your host, Lee Turner, and let's keep those B-movies rolling.